Hi guys, welcome back to the Legal Gentleman YouTube channel, The Hunter Collective. Um, today I've got a woman in the chair today and we had a little chat on the couch and his last haircut, or the last style that he went for, was that kind of like one back and sides, high and tight, and then kind of a shorter, kind of more, not blunt, not too blunt, but a bit like kind of not too feathered, not too blunt. So that kind of in between look like, which I totally understand what he means. Um, but we were just looking through the hair, so just having a look through it, and he got a haircut last that was it not really what was it what you wanted, but it was a little bit. It's a bit rough. Okay, so what what I've noticed is that when he wants the one high, it looks like it's going really high, but kind of not taking the corners in too much. So as you can see, it's quite long through the corner here, and then quite short sort of through the crown. So it's going to really change his look up today because I'm going to try and take the one as high as I can, but still working with that squareness. So trying to utilise the the shape of. Um, woman's head basically just to kind of create that squareness so up and off with the one so again that kind of high and tight look but we think i doing like basically like a, a classic short back and sides with a tiny bit of a shorter fringe now you said you go diving is that right surfing. so oh, surfing right okay so he's just he goes surfing right so i don't think he wants a high maintenance haircut so i don't think we're going to give you a high maintenance haircut. i think what he's kind of asked for is kind of bang on just a it is kind of high and tight short back and sides bit of a shorter fringe a little bit of choppy through the top super easy super effective it works well, it dries quickly as well, which I'm, you know, I'm sure that helps. I think we'll give it a shampoo and conditioner and then we'll, um, we'll crack on. All right, cool. We've just shampooed and conditioner, a little bit of a blank canvas for me. So what I thought we'd do today in terms of starting off is that I know I, I always do a horseshoe. Well, nine times out of 10, I do a horseshoe section. But I think today I'm gonna do it a little bit differently. I'm gonna start at the top this time around and work down. The reason being is that I'm gonna set the shape through the top, pick the length and everything that we like, and then set myself a guideline on the corners here, so the round of the head, so I know where to come up and off when I'm using my clippers. So I think this will benefit, this look will benefit from this because I'm trying to use this head shape for the high and tight kind of blend um, that Umin's after. So we can get rid of this longer corner. As you can see, when I pick this up, you see there's a little point in it, here and there. When we get rid of that, and it's finger length, we can work up and off with our clipper work then. So it should hopefully help to graduate a little bit easier, especially given that more high and tight look. I'm gonna take about that much off because it is still a bit short for the crown, right? I'm gonna cut it pretty straight. Now, I'm into that fine texture. So I don't wanna try and overly texturize this look. I want the sectioning and a little bit of the razor to do that for me as well. So I'm taking nice small sections and I'm picking it from the back forward. I'm using the guide from behind there. I want all the top to basically be quite uniform. I'm not looking to try and um, leave any length towards the fringe like that. I'm gonna literally work through like a, short, a traditional short back inside, just with a slight little twist on it, just to match into Umin's hairline and, and also just, just a little bit more texture to it as well. I'm going to do that straight up. Still leaving a little bit of length through the fringe. We're the same as before. I'm just working through this corner now. So you'll see quite a lot more hair come off now. Only because the corner is a, it's a lot longer. And again, keeping it as we get to the fringe, keeping it up. Going straight up and off the head. Still leave that little bit of length in the fringe. Again, it's a bit like when I leave the crown a bit longer. It's nice to finish off at the end. I'm going to set my guide when I come off with the clippers. So I'm bringing a section from the round of the head here. I'm pulling it completely horizontal out towards me. I cut that in. I'll use that as my guide. Take one section just back to the side of the head. When you get to the back, what that's doing is leaving me a nice little guideline just there, knowing where I need to work up and off. This is really good um, for anybody who's after just something very low maintenance. It's just such an easy haircut. I think it fits so well into a woman's lifestyle as well, just of just surfing, you know. It, it's something that's gonna grow out nicely. It's gonna take a little bit longer to grow out too. I just think it's, um, it, it is the classic and it's a classic for a reason, you know. I'm doing it slightly differently than I would do if I was doing it completely traditional. I'd probably work scissor over comb through the top and whatnot, but 
Um, it's just, I, th I think the circle has never gone out of fashion for a reason. And I believe, I think it was kind of mainstream, wasn't it? From George Clooney, wasn't it? We said, wasn't it? He was the kind of person who kind of brought this kind of short back inside the um, kind of what was it like? What we said it was a Caesar cut of me or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know. If, I think that's what it was called at the time. But he was the one who really took off that kind of, a, you know, went from the curtains down to that kind of short back inside. So now. Put this hairline curves around, I'm going to get around this way. I'm completely parallel with my section. Again, nice small sections. I'm using the guide from the left hand side. There. So I know as soon as we dry this off and start working with the clippers, as we start getting up and to the round of the head, we'll see that guide. So that's why we're doing it. Now, I'm going to put the fringe in now. So again, we're not looking for something too feathered, is what we said, and nothing too overly blunt. So I'll use the raise for that. So what I'll do is I'll bring it down, all the way down. I'll section it off and off like that, I'm making sure the hair is is very wet. Otherwise, the razor will pull. I'll bring it down, my finger. Looking for a nice solid length to keep that fringe nice and solid, and nice and full. Change the razor to work through. What we're going to get is a very nice serrated finish. So nothing too blunt, but nothing too feathered. And now just freehand that through. So this will give the most natural effect to the fringe. So again, like we always say, using a scissor is always, going to, is always basically two pieces of metal coming together. So there's going to be a blunt element to it somewhere. Using the razor, if you overly use it, it'll make it really feathered. If you use it kind of slightly flat, it'll be a bit blunter. But if you use it and then break through like this, that'll create that more natural finish to it as well. So we're going to slide into the fringe now and just help break that up a little bit. Again, we're not looking for something too feathered, so as I'm working down, as I'm getting to the fringe, I'm coming straight off the head. I'm not actually going into the fringe, I'm going to the sections behind the fringe. This will help break up this bit here. So if you want it blocky, you can keep it nice and forward. If you want it broken up, you can work it behind the fringe. It just gives them a few options. This hair has got that finer texture, so it will move about with very minimal effort. And also, one of the things that I should point out is that Omen doesn't like to wear product. So again, this haircut needs to be done as, as perfect as I can make it so that it looks great without anything in it. There's no good of me putting loads of product and then he, he wakes up tomorrow and goes, I don't even wear it like that. So I need to make sure this sits great without anything in it. So I'm gonna dry this off. Just using the fingers. And drying it from the crown, so again, working that circle around the crown to get to dry its, its natural uh, growth pattern. Yeah, yeah. So as you can see, that fringe isn't too blunt. It's got that little bit of shatteredness to it. So not blunt, not too feathered. So I think we've got a bang on. Does that look right feel like that, yeah? Cool. Is that what you had in mind when you said about that? Brilliant. Nice. So again, as you can see, by working that razor behind the fringe, what's done is allowed the fringe just to move about a little bit without actually affecting the finish of the fringe from the razor. So you've got that very serrated ends to the, to the actual fringe itself, but it's not like kind of strandy, you know, like that kind of real feathered look. But by working behind the fringe and just creating that little bit of movement, it allows them to break it up as much as you want or have it as blunt as you'd like as well. If you look here, if, you, if I can try and get an idea for you, that length there compared to that length there, there's my guide that I'm looking for when I work with the clipper work. So what I'm going to do is bring it down from the crown, so scooping it under to my finger, so scooping it to meet my finger, going above my finger, and then bring it down as it's dry. Again, the crown is the most important thing. I'm going to follow this guide and cut across. So there's my guide, 
I'm wanting to cut right across because again we need the guide for the crown as well. There we go. I'm going to start with my one and a half guard. So we're open. And we'll start at the side. I'm going to brush the fringe out the way and start here. And just work up and off into that guide. Now what you should see is a really nice natural blend coming through now. So I'm working into finger length here. So I'm basically working into a number two. You could get away with that by him walking out of that. I personally think you'd get away with that. If, if you were being lazy, which we're not, obviously. Just work up and off, up into my guide. I'm working up and off. So again, we're trying to keep that crown there. I'm just trying to utilize that high and tight effect with the shape of a woman's head and also the angle of where you pull off with the clipper. We're working up and up. So I'm working now the one, the one and a half close guard into that 175. What's the angle that I'm doing it at? So it's blending nice and effortlessly into that one, that open guard on the one point on the uh, one and a half guard. I'm going to work down to my one guard. Open. Do the same thing, work a bit lower down. I'm coming off into where my closed one and a half guard started. Another look, closed guard into the one. Started just where the side bend starts. And do the same thing, up and off. Same idea. As you can see by working it like that, very minimal efforts to connect into that top as well. Very minimal. What we're still not being allowed to do is maintain some length over that crown as well. I think this would be really ruined if we went too high at the crown. I think still keeping it a nice bit of shape through the back here works really, really well. I think if we went up and over, I think the whole shape and look will change of this. So I still think by working and keeping that crown and putting that guideline in as the crown was dry and following it through, I think it would really help this shape. I think it worked well for everybody. What I'll do is I'll just work a nice sort of natural taper into the neck, nothing too high, not trying to take any effect of like a fade on the neck or anything, just a very nice natural low blend out into nothing. Flicking off like that. Just coming up and off as we get to just the bottom of the ears. Working in between the clothes guard and the guard fully open. And just work a little bit lower down. And then completely closed on the very bottom of the neckline. This just gives a very nice natural taper. Now, a taper to me is un getting rid of unnecessary unwanted hair. That's why I always thought a taper was. So I think doing something like this is kind of perfect because that's all you're doing. You're just getting rid of all that like, kind of unnecessary hair on the neck and you just blend it out into nothing. No harsh line down the bottom, it's going to grow out very quickly. It just gives it a bit of a nice, softer finish. I'm just going to work up from the one, clippers up, and work up. And off. And now lifting it up and coming across. I'm just basically capping off where I put my guideline in before. So the scissor that I use to point cut is a touch thinner. So it'll just help me retouch any of the hairs that I can't get to with a, a bit of a thicker scissor. Just going over the temple area, just in case I've missed it with the clippers. And it's quite 
Very blonde through here, a lot of lighter hairs through here, so I'm just going to strengthen this up a little bit. But as you can see, his beard's quite natural, so I don't want to make it too shaped. That again, we're looking for that low maintenance element here. So if I start shaping and cutting into hairlines, it's going to go out very quickly. So which that low maintenance element is gone because essentially he's going to have to get a haircut again because it's stubble. So I'm trying to keep it as close to the ear as I can, just to make it nice and clean. I'm not looping it too high. As you can see, his hair goes so close to his ear. If it went too high, there'd be so much stubble there within probably a few days. And things like this, good to take into account, because again, there's no point in having a low maintenance hairstyle when you've cut right into the hairline, because it'll grow out too quickly. Flick up into the hairline. And what I'll do now is I'll just blend the beard in. Of course, say, I think there's going to be a lot of people watching this with real beard envy, you know, mate. So, yeah. I, I am one of them. I'm just working a one and a half down. And then we'll do a little bit of freehand. A little bit of clipper over comb to. And straight out, I'm going to flat to the head as you can. working down. There we go. So now I'm just gonna finish off by cutting through the crown a little bit, picking that up as you can see. This is where we left it. And that is gonna sit nice and flat. As you can see, that is not gonna stick up too much. So I reckon we bring this back and over and over direct that front bit back into our guide from the right hand side, the left hand side and underneath. What this will do is it will still blend it into the, here. And that's it. I don't think you can notice that's a little bit longer anywhere else. And just take that fringe out. There we go. That's all we need to do. He doesn't like to wear product. I think it's got enough shape anyway for it to look the way you want it to. And uh, yeah, nice and low maintenance, nice and simple. I'm still really jealous of what you do for a living, mate. <laughs> so as you can see, you've kept that fringe so it's not mega blunt, but there's a kind of a little bit. Um, you can still see it can be blunt if you want to. You can also make it as messy as you want. And then just when it's high and tight on the side, but you've still got that nice squareness here, but you can still see all that, that length in the corner has been taken off now as well. All right, man. Cool. Brilliant. What you're looking for is basically, again, short back and sides. One, number one back and sides, shorter on top, and a slightly shorter fringe, but nothing too blunt, nothing too overly thinned out. Um, again, just using, just ask them if you're going to get that one quite high and tight, just ask them not to go up and off, um, not to go up and over the round the head, or not to go up and over the crown, for example, because I think it would be really ruined if I had took that off there. I think if we'd have took that right off, it would have changed the whole look. It would have been very front heavy. Um, it would have looked a little bit too thick at the front, I'd imagine. So I think just keeping that shape and working around, still keeping that squareness in there. So it's almost like that kind of jar heady kind of look, I suppose, it's kind of really square. Um, so ask for that, number one back in size and just trying to keep it high and tight, but not too round, if you can help it. Uh, and then yeah, just just short back, just basically trim the top as, as short as you want to go. And then just cut the fringe in. Again, this is a good haircut for anyone who, for, for women's hairline, for my hairline, it, w it wouldn't really change because you're combing it all the way down, you're cutting it to a, a straight line, basically. So it doesn't really matter on the hairline. Obviously, if it's a bit, if it's thinning a lot, it can be hard to do because you have to take the section behind it shorter. Again, because we're not looking for any like kind of over diet, we're not looking for any sort of um, disconnection in the fringe or nothing like that. So just ask them, just to, again, just a good trim on the top and just try and keep that hairline full but not too blunt, I would say. Yeah. Brilliant, thank you very much.